Welcome to Be Advised, Leading with Value with Brad Swinehart. In this podcast, we will focus on successful marketing methods for advisors that generate prospects and clients. We will learn from the best in the industry on how advisors in the trenches today are growing their practices. Join us for this journey where Brad draws from years of expertise and guest experts to help advisors reach their full potential. This is the Be Advised Leading with Value podcast with Brad Swinehart of White Glove. Communication is the focus of this episode, as Brad speaks with Deirdre Van Nest, a top-rated international keynoter and trainer and the creator of the Crazy Good Talks Blueprint and the Emotionally Engaging Advisor, two communication systems that teach advisors how to make more of an impact and bring in business faster with the power of public speaking, storytelling, and emotional connections. Brad, please tell us more about Deirdre. Oh, I cannot be more excited to have Deirdre on the call today. We've worked together for a couple of years now, and her message and her training is absolutely in line with White Glove's mentality. So what we've seen over the last you know six to eight months is more advisors getting in front of prospects virtually. And I think that this topic today as we've kind of dialed in that secret sauce of how to get people to a webinar, how to pe- how to get people to attend and listen to you virtually, and what advisors really are struggling with is how to convert and what they should be saying, because it's different than their typical dinner seminar. It's different than a library or university event. And Deirdre, you know, thank you very much for being on today. I really want to start with the content of a class. How do you structure that? What type of questions should someone be asking? What have you seen that would lead an advisor to see more success when they're hosting these virtual events? Great. Yeah. Thanks for having me here, Brad. So the first thing is many advisors are making a mistake when they're planning their content. And the mistake comes in the form of a question. So what I see happening out there, Brad, is an advisor decides, okay, I'm, I'm going to do a webinar. And then the, the question they'll ask themselves is, well, what do, what do I want to say? What am I going to say? Right? And that's a logical question. But if you actually want people to be excited on the webinar and you want people to convert into appointments, it's the wrong question. So the question should be, how do I hold their attention? So I'm going to say that slowly so people can jot it down. How do I hold their attention? Your entire webinar should be focused on, yes, providing great value, great content, but doing it in a way where you hold people's attention because you know if you can't hold attention, you ain't getting appointments, right? Oh, that's perfect. And I think too, you know, there's that Zoom fatigue. There's there's people are they have the ability to not pay attention when it comes to a webinar. You know, I think advisors do minimize the real impact of that because when you're at a seminar, it's rude to look off, to pull out your phone, to walk out of the room. But if you're attending a webinar, they can't see you. You could be playing Uh, Candy Crush on the other screen, right? Totally. Absolutely. And listen, Brad, when we go back to doing live events, and that will happen at some point, this webinar is is really evergreen. I'm sorry, the podcast we're doing right now is evergreen because these same tips, some of the same tips are going to apply when you get back live. So even when they get back and they're doing their live events, you should be asking yourself, how do I hold attention? But yes, this question is paramount in the environment we're in when you're doing a virtual event. And we see that. We see that in some states and in some areas, live events are coming back and the attendance is kind of you know, hit or miss, if you will, and and advisors will have to adapt to that. And I think more than anything else, we've realized that virtual is never going away. If anything else, it's just another tool in your toolbox. Now there's going to be people that are comfortable going to a restaurant or a library, but there's probably just as many people that are more comfortable sitting at home in front of their, their screen because now they're used to it. They're used to communicating with their family and friends that way. So they're also used to getting education that way and it's becoming more and more comfortable. 
And this is such great news for the industry. I know there's a lot of advisors. I work with a lot of advisors and there's a lot who are scared about this and oh my gosh. And no, this is such great news for the industry. I feel like the, the pandemic has forced this industry into this century, quite frankly, when it comes to technology, we're, we're finally catching up to all the other industries in what we're allowed to do. The fact this is becoming commonplace just gives you, the advisor, another tool in your toolkit, and it allows you to leverage your time in a way that you were not allowed to leverage it before. So fully embrace this tool and add it to the live events when those live events come back. Oh, absolutely. The efficiency that you can do these webinars at, you know, you can use pre-recording and there's there's methods there where you can make them still appear to be live. You preach using video with follow-up and nurturing, but yet the efficiency of virtual is just going to be an, an added bonus for advisors that want to continue to grow their practice. What we're seeing advisors do is use virtual to reach new areas as well. It doesn't have to be in their backyard anymore. It doesn't have to be, will this person drive to my office? I have an advisor that's based in Minnesota that does events all across the country now. He just picks a fluent area after a fluent area, and he's picking up clients all virtually. It's great. It's great. So let's swing back to the actual event, the webinar. How do you suggest they open one of these things? You know, we've always said, you know, you have to have a a powerful opening. You know, we have the the Frank Masilli where he's tearing up a dollar bill and that works really well live. But what would you say, you know, a webinar is a little bit different or is it? Uh, It's not. So there is a nuance. So yes. So the the concept in in my world, the way I talk about it, Brad, is you want to open with a bang. And that means you say something, we'll talk about what that something could be in a moment. You say something to grab people's attention right away. Because Brad, how long will people take before they decide, if if you're the speaker, how long will they give you before they're like, yeah, this is going to be great or "Eh, I'm out. What do you think? Oh man, if you get more than 60 seconds, you're blessed, I would guess. (laughs) That's a generous person. Um, It's usually like five to 30 seconds. They're going to decide really quickly. If they're in or they're out. And so most advisors, unfortunately, waste those first five to probably five seconds to five minutes. I've seen advisors go as long as 12 minutes before getting into anything good. What I call the unpleasant pleasantries. And the unpleasant pleasantries are the things that are really pleasant when you're talking with someone one-on-one, right? The, hey, how you been? What's going on? So glad to be here, blah, 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 blah. That's all very pleasant when you meet with someone one-on-one. And that's kind of a, a social norm. And I'm not saying get rid of that. But when you're hosting an event for a group of people, there's no place for the unpleasant pleasantries. Though they're, they're unpleasant because people don't care about them in that environment. You've got to dispense with them. And, and Brad, before I tell the group what to do, I want to just, I want to really drive this home with this analogy, because I, I really want your advisors from this point forward to never engage in the unpleasant pleasantries again, whether they're doing a webinar or a live presentation. So Brad, let's pretend, uh, let's pretend you're my advisor. Okay. Okay. You and with I you are, so far. <laughs> with me so far. We're, we're sitting down and we're having a meeting and I say to you, so Brad, you know what, I've been telling you that I, I'm going to be. Uh, inheriting this piece of oceanfront property, Pacific coast of California. I inherited the property. That, this just happened last month. And I've been thinking about what I'm going to use the property for. And I want your opinion on this. I think I'm going to use it uh, for a garbage dump. Say what now? Yeah, a garbage <laughs> dump. What, what do you think it's a good idea? Yeah, I think that's a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so go with me on this. Just indulge me for a moment. Okay, I'm we'll with you so far. Stick sticking with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is not that hard, right? This is not that hard. So tell me, why is that a terrible idea? Well, because then I don't get to see the ocean. I thought you were going to invite me over. I thought we were going surfing. I thought this was going to be fun. Yes, it's not going to be fun at all, right? So here, here's the deal. Would you agree that any piece of land is considered an asset? Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Would you agree that oceanfront property is prime real estate? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So now let's talk about the webinar or the live presentation. Your webinar is not just a bunch of words strung together. Your webinar, when it is strategically crafted and you have crafted it so that you're holding attention and you're actually getting appointments from it, is an asset. 
And let me give you an example of what one single webinar or live presentation can do for you. One of my clients, Mike is an advisor, a top producer, been in the industry about 25 years. And I helped him rewrite his, his sort of standard college planning seminar, if you will. And so I got an email from him about a year ago and he said, Jared, I was just calculating how much revenue I have generated over the years from that one presentation. And Brad, do you know how much it was? I'm excited to hear now. You've yes. got me hooked. <laughs> it was north of $2 million. Wow. Yeah. We're not talking assets under management. This is income for him. North of $2 million from one single college planning webinar, to, uh, live presentation. It wasn't a webinar back, you know, because this just- I would, say that's a, I would say that's a needle mover for me anyway. I mean, an extra $2 million would be a needle mover for it's, me. For I think for most people, it's, it's a total game changer. Needle mover, game changer. I can't quote those numbers for every client, but I see this thing with clients over and over again, where we craft the webinar strategically, you know, they, all of a sudden they're getting no appointments and now 80% of the room is signing up to meet with them or 50% of the room or Mike gave me some hard numbers, which was, which was lovely. But the, the point is, do you think Mike considers that a bunch of words just strung together that presentation or do you think he considers it an asset? I'm liking where you're headed with this now. So he's absolutely looking at that as an asset. And I bet you're going to teach us what the prime real estate is. Exactly. And so the prime real estate of the asset is the opening. Please do not waste that piece of prime real estate, that piece of oceanfront property by engaging in the unpleasant pleasantries of repeating your name, telling them how awesome it is to be here, how you're so happy they showed up, that the weather is this, the weather is that, blah, blah, blah. You want to open with a bang. So do I have you convinced at least, Brad? Hopefully I have your listeners convinced, but do I at least have you convinced? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I like the blah, 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 because that's probably what your attendees are hearing when you oh. start talking about your name and right, 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 right the, uh, the Charlie Brown teacher, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So let me give you an example on a webinar, how you would do this. Okay. There's a couple of different scenarios. So first, let's assume the advisor is introducing themselves. They do not have someone else introducing them on the webinar. And let's just pretend that we are running this as a webinar where you're not chatting and seeing the people in advance, right? Whereas a meeting, you might it might be a little more informal where people are coming on and you're saying hi before you officially start. That's kind of a different scenario. But let's pretend we're running this as a webinar where you hit the broadcast button and then you start. So what you would do is you would say the name of the webinar. So welcome to the Emotionally Engaging Advisor. And then I would open with my bang. And my bang, if you want to do this in a way that's fail-proof, is to either ask an interesting question that kind of foreshadows where you're going to go or to give them a benefit statement. So I'll give you an example. Welcome to the Emotionally Engaging Advisor. If you want to learn how to increase trust, connection, and likability in four minutes or less across all communication platforms, you are in the right place. Hi, my name is Deirdre Van Nest. I am going to be your host for this evening, and I am so excited to welcome you here. Let's jump into the first step for making that emotional connection. And then you, you know, go into your content. Immediately sounds way better than blah, 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 blah. Yes. Yes. Right. And who is not going to go, oh, I totally want to learn that. That's why they're there. And they know that you mean business. My introduction, necessarily justice. If they don't know you, then I would add two or three relevant credentials. You do not need to get into an entire bio. So uh, for me, I'd say, hi, I'm Deirdre Van Nest. I'm an international keynoter and creator of the Crazy Good Talks Blueprint and the Emotionally Engaging Advisor. So let's jump into tip number one, and then I'd, I'd go. Okay, Deirdre, to sum that up, what is the most important thing an advisor needs to focus on with their opening? The most important thing is making sure it really is, if you're, if you're asking a question or giving a benefit statement, it's something that that particular audience wants right? So you've got to tie 
the question, the benefit statement into like, you got to get in the head of that audience and think, is this going to be something interesting and of value to them? Because it's going to be different for different audiences. I love that. Let's switch gears here just a little bit. One thing that a lot of advisors are telling me is that they're having trouble maintaining the energy through a webinar. These guys are seasoned. They've done hundreds of dinner workshops. They've done hundreds of events at a library or community center. And you know, you're, a, you're an awesome keynote speaker. You feed off the audience. You can see them leaning in and you know you can, you can keep hammering it or you can see that they get confused and you need, know you need to slow it down and maybe make it a little bit more high level. How do you maintain the energy throughout a webinar? Yeah, such a good question. And this is a real challenge for a lot of people today. So I was uh, meeting for dinner last night with another friend who's a keynoter and a trainer. And we were both saying how much energy we get from webinars, which sounds really weird, right? And I'll be honest, I never expected. Now, I've been doing virtual meetings and trainings for my group clients for the last eight years, but I've really ramped up the webinars I'm doing because before I was, you know, almost 100% live when, when companies would hire me, but I'm getting so much energy from webinars. And here's kind, of the, here's kind of the secret. I'll give you the first secret, Brad, to getting energy from a webinar is you actually have to be able to see in your mind's eye that you are talking to people that there are people on the other side of that webcam. And so right now, as I'm speaking, I'm envisioning you and I'm envisioning Patrice, who's your producer, right? And and so I am seeing the two of you in my mind's eye and I'm speaking as if we're sitting next to each other. If an advisor struggles with that, because a lot of people, that's a little bit of a leap for them. Here's what I recommend. And this might sound really silly, (laughs) but it works is take a picture of someone that you really like, print it out, cut out their head, put it on a popsicle stick and tape it right (laughs) behind that webcam, okay? And you are looking at them and talking to them the entire time. Oh, I love that. I was recently just speaking with an advisor and he said what he does because he was having that same struggle. Yep. Just, you know, really loving that camera and, and really, you know, getting feedback from it. He was, he was really struggling with it. So what he did was he'd set up his webcam. He'd set up the, the webinar ready to go. Used white glove, of course. But then what he would do is he'd have his family or staff sit behind the yes. webcam yes. and then he would just present to them. Yes. It's great. Yes, that's a brilliant idea. So, so you got to be able to do that. You, you're not presenting to a computer. These are, these are live human beings. I love that. Yeah. And well, let's talk about so that energy level. You have to envision your audience. You have to focus on them. You know, I think advisors know this at their hearts that the presentation is for the audience. It's not for them. And once right. they realize that, then they always do better. But what do you see, you know, a, a dinner seminar might be an hour and a half. And there's live question and answers and you have that feeding back and forth of the audience. What do you see as best practice for webinars and advisors? Yeah. What kind of length? How do, you, how do you keep that engagement throughout? You know, what does that look like? Okay, great question. So first of all, I'm going to ask you another trivia question here. Oh, man. How long do you think the average adult can pay attention for if they, if they like the content and like the speaker before they start getting like, Oh, I need to like, just sort of tune out a little or shift my brain or, you know what I mean? Like how, how long? Well, you know, me, it's like 15 or 20 seconds, but I like to look at shiny (laughs) objects, right? I'm going to say 52 minutes. Okay. It's seven to 10 minutes. Seven to 10 minutes. (laughs) All right. Seven to 10 minutes. So here's what, here's what this means for you as a presenter is you have to do something to shift the energy at least every seven to 10 minutes. And I say every three to five minutes, particularly on a webinar, you've got to shift the energy more virtually than you do in person. What do I mean by shift the energy? What I mean is you cannot go into lecture mode. You have to break up the lecture and your facts and figures with things that are going to be interesting and engaging. So this goes back to when you're planning your content. This is all about the structure of the presentation. Structure trumps everything. Structure will likely trump delivery in most cases. If you are great at delivering, but your structure is awful, I promise you, you're not going to keep people and you're not going to get appointments. 
on the flip side, if your structure is amazing, like my client, Mike, and your delivery is just adequate or average, you will generate appointments and keep people, keep people hooked. I have a formula that I teach my clients in the Crazy Good Talks Blueprint when they're structuring their webinars. It's called CETA, C-E-T-A. This is how, I'm going to go over this at a very high level, Brad. This is how you actually keep the energy moving. You take each point in the presentation and you apply this CETA formula. What it stands for is C is you got to be conversational. You want to be talking to people as if you're talking to one person like we're doing today, sitting across from them, having a cup of coffee. You don't want to use a lot of we's, everybody's, anybody's. You want to use the word you. You want to use informal language. You want to talk like you talk. You don't want to talk like you write. You also don't want to use a lot of industry jargon, particularly if you're talking directly to the consumer. Do not use jargon. Don't say liquidity when you can say access to cash. Okay, so be conversational. The second is you got to provide people with an experience. You got to look at your webinar as an experience. This isn't just a monologue, again, a lecture. You've got to weave in things that we've been weaving in today in this podcast. I think you'll notice that I've been weaving in these trivia questions to Brad, right? When I'm talking to a live audience, like on a webinar, I would have the audience typing those answers in the chat or in the Q&A function. Okay, so you're not just spoon feeding them all the information, you're getting them to interact and go back and forth with you. And then I would comment on the things that they say. I think you'll notice that I've told you a couple of stories during our time together. I've woven in some analogies during our time together. So I'm giving you facts and figures, but it's woven into this tapestry of an experience. Uh, The third is you gotta get people thinking and thinking about themselves. So you want to ask them questions like, when was the last time you did X, Y, Z? Think about in your own life. Have you ever done this? Get them thinking about themselves. And also, and this kind of ties in with that experience, don't just spoon feed them content. When there's a specific fact or figure statistic that's interesting, but it's not so interesting as you if you uh, present it as a fact or a figure, ask them to guess what they think, like I've done with Brad. And again, get them interacting in the Q&A or the chat. And then yeah, finally, and I've, gotten, I've gotten everyone wrong so far. So that's not very fun. You have not. <laughs> I you so have not. <laughs> you definitely have it. And then finally, the A in, in CETA stands for application. You don't want your webinar to just be like this nice exercise where they're like, oh, that was really fun. Now what do I do? Give people something tangible, a tangible tactic they can use to make their life or their business better. Like I've given you several strategies during this podcast on how to make your webinars better. And what we see too, and I wholeheartedly agree with everything that you say, what we've seen too is using tech, especially in a web setting, use tech to your advantage. You know, instead of asking a question and having them chat, you can even pop up a poll and then they can see what other people responded. It's great. And one of the things of getting people to interact on your webinar is that when it comes down to the call to action, and I need your viewpoint on this, Deirdre, but when it comes down to the call to action, if they've been interacting the whole time, if they've been answering chats, if they've been answering polls, if they've been clicking on things during the webinar, when that calendar app pops up, it's just natural. They're already programmed. Their mindset is already, I click on this, I click on this, I click on this. And it's not jarring when it comes to that call to action. You know, yeah, it's 100, get- 100%, 100%. You want to get them doing things. And don't be afraid either in a webinar to give people 30 seconds or a minute to do an exercise on their own and have them type their answers in the chat or the Q&A. You can do that. I like that a lot. So <laughs> We've talked about the the content, the questions. We've talked about, hey, let's open with a bang. Let's keep that energy, you know, but it all boils down to, and I would would say most advisors agree that it doesn't matter how many registrants you get, doesn't matter how many attendees you get. It all matters how many people commit to that call to action and book an appointment with you. And what would you say, what is your take on that call to action? How should they do it? How often should they do it? What should it be? Yes. Okay. Great question. So here's, here's the kind of the formula for the call to action. So the call to action actually starts in your opening. The mistake that a lot of advisors make 
they set the call to action up like a commercial, right? So it ends up being, Brad, like one part education, one part commercial. Have you heard those presentations before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're terrible. Yeah. And it's very awkward for the advisor. They jarring. Feel- I always think it's jarring that it you're, you go into for education, then all of a sudden there's a commercial. It's like commercial break. That's when I go get my chips and soda. That's exactly it. I literally once had a client say to me, okay, now for the commercial. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I don't say that ever. You know. So here's what you do. So this doesn't feel out of left field. It makes it really easy for you, the advisor, to go into the offer. Whenever you do a presentation, you should have what I call a roadmap or an agenda. You might know it as an agenda where you actually tell people, first, you're going to learn this, then you're going to learn this, and then you're going to learn this. So let's say you have three points, right? You always want to have what I call a final destination in the roadmap. The final destination, so it sounds like this. In the next hour, you're going to learn A, you're going to learn B, you're going to learn C, and finally, Before we wrap up, I promise you, I'm not going to leave you hanging. If you want to learn exactly how to apply what you're hearing tonight to your personal financial situation, you're going to get access to a free resource to get you started or two free resources to get you started. So what you've done there, Brad, is you have foreshadowed that this is coming. And then when you go to make the offer, and we'll talk about that in a moment, all you're doing is delivering on your promise. That makes perfect sense. And then what we've seen best practices is during A, B, and C, you can embed trial closes in there in different formats. If you guys noticed earlier when Deirdre was speaking and she said statistics, Mm -hmm. she said facts, her voice changed, right? She was addressing that type of message in a different way than that normal high energy. And, you know, to me, it's like, oh, that's boring. But to someone else, oh, statistics, that's boring. But to someone else, that's how their brain works. They get fired up when they hear statistics and they want it a little bit lower key. They don't want that excitement. They don't want to be sold. And she's addressing those in different fashion. So she's hit every type of person in that room, just in the, in the podcast today. And that's, that's a little bit more advanced, but you know, when we're talking a B C Deirdre, do you see the best practice as well as to try to hit each one of those types of people that are in your audience? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You want to speak to the benefits of everybody in the room. And so that means you have to be thinking about what are those people motivated by people are usually motivated by about gaining more time or gaining more money. They're usually motivated, motivated by kind of ego concerns, right? Being sort of the best to do right by their family. They're motivated by how they feel, right? You're going to feel better. You're going to have more peace of mind. And they're, they're motivated by, oh, you'll be able to do more. So if you kind of hit on all of those, at least once throughout, you will, you will hit on hopefully the majority of the audience. I love that. And we see typically there's, there's the people that are going to make the bulk of the people are going to make decisions based on emotion, but then you also want to hit the audience members that make decisions based on tactical reasons. Yeah. And then there's the strategic thinkers that just need more information and they love that data. So if you can hit each type of person in the audience, you know, like Deirdre did today, then you're going to convert more. You're going to have that call to action at the end is going to be much more effective. Yes, absolutely. You know, and don't be afraid. Here's where I thought you were going with that. I love what you just said. Um, (laughs) But here's where I thought you were going with that. One of the things that I did earlier is, so you're letting them know that this offer is coming, but don't be afraid to, not obnoxiously, okay? But don't be afraid to casually seed, what's called seed. So drop a seed or two throughout the presentation. So one of the things you might've noticed that I said earlier on, and I don't remember what point I was making. Oh, I know when I talked about seed up, I said, so when I work with my private clients in the Crazy Good Talks Blueprint, teaching them how to write webinars, this is a formula I teach them. That was a seed. Like right there, I'm letting you know that I work with private clients and I've got a formula and I can teach it to you. Don't be afraid in one of your points to say, so when I work with my clients, when my clients come to my office, this is what we really zero in on. That's going to let the listener go, oh, he or she works with clients. They come into their office. I might want to be that person. Does that make sense, Brad? Absolutely. You want to be able to tell a story, but you're actually showing the emotional and tactical steps that that person made. We'll have advisors do that on a webinar where they'll say, 
recently I was doing a taxes and retirement webinar and and I popped my calendar link down here in the bottom and, and one of the attendees booked a meeting with me. And during that 15 minute consultation, we found ways yes. that she could save thousands in taxes, uh, right? You're yes. dropping all those seeds, like Deirdre said, into that, as well as explaining to them what next steps are without doing a commercial. Exactly. And don't do it too often where it's obvious, right? You, you have to do this line between sounding obnoxious and salesy. And, but you know, if you do it once or twice before you get to the offer, I don't think anybody's going to pick up on that, that there, there's a strategy there, if you will. Yep. You so want to, you want to change the their, change your method of that call to action, right. To, to hit all those points before the end of your webinar. Yeah. And then let's talk about the call to action if that's okay. So then let's say you have three points in your presentation, you finish point number three and you say, okay, so, you know, before we close, I did promise you access to two free resources. Like if you're sitting here right now, like many of my audience members do, and I'm seating when I say that, right? Thinking, well, I wonder what my financial picture looks like. I wonder how this applies to me personally. Then these resources are a great next step for you. And then I always recommend that my advisors have uh, what I call a digital gift. That's something that you can send to those who are not appointment ready yet. So some sort of tips list, a checklist, something that they'll want that has to do with what they were just learning, but goes deeper. So you can capture their email addresses and nurture them over time. And then the second resource is what I call a strategy session. Please don't ever call this an appointment. Nobody wants another appointment. I don't know, Brad, if you woke up saying, I hope someone offers me an appointment today, but it's unlikely that you thought that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. Right. No, but a strategy session to pay less in taxes. Wow. I'm all over that. So I teach my clients and I use the word strategy session. You can, you know, you can pick another word if you don't like that terminology, but try to avoid using the word meeting or appointment. People are sick of meetings. People don't want more appointments, but offer them a strategy session, right? Give it a, give it a name that has a benefit like pay less in taxes strategy session then lay out the three benefits they're going to get from the strategy session. And then, and this is critical, 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 you have to tell them exactly where to access the resources. So let me give you an example. I'm working with a, a corporate client right now, helping to rewrite all of their financial education. And this is a piece we're really focusing on because they were pretty kind of loosey goosey, like, okay, Here's the strategy session. And then people are going, well, how do I, I don't know where to get it. You have to be ridiculously specific. Like you're talking to kindergartners. So the way we're doing it for this client, Brad, they're literally saying, okay, so about three seconds after the webinar ends, a box is going to pop up. Click the link for the box. In the box are going to be four questions. Question number one, if you want resource number one, you're just going to put your email address there. If you want the strategy session, then question number two has a link to my calendar. You're going to click on that link. That's going to bring you over to my calendar. Then you're going to fill in your name, phone number, and email address, and you're going to pick the time that you want. Then within, I'm making this up because it depends on your technology and your time frame. within an hour, you're going to get a confirmation of the strategy session and exactly what to do and what to bring to the session, right? Like you have to be that specific with people, particularly on a webinar. That makes total sense to me. And it's, it's not a sales tactic at that point. You're just outlining, these are the next steps and this is what you can expect. And I think people will really appreciate that. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, your, your conversion rate will go up simply from doing that. Well, Deidre, I just want to say thank you. I think there was tons of knowledge dropped in this podcast today. You know, I, I know that you give out a ton of free value add stuff. Where do people get that again, just so that they're clear on that? Yeah, yeah. so my website is crazygoodtalks.com. And if you go to crazygoodtalks.com forward slash TV, you'll get to Crazy Good Talks TV. And Crazy Good Talks TV is a series of 26 video episodes giving you tips like you just got today. So for example, if you like that uh, CETA, you know, acronym that I taught you about how to keep the energy moving, there's five episodes that goes into each one at a deeper level on exactly how to apply CETA and worksheets to help you do it. And most of it, Brad, is geared for live presentations, but everything will transfer to a webinar for today's times. 
Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I think that there's a ton of value here. And I know I'm going to update a couple of my presentations to add in some of those key points that you brought up today. So I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for having me. So many tips for the taking, Brad. You are absolutely right. Thank you, Deirdre Van Nest of Crazy Good Talks with Brad Swinehart of White Glove. To know when more of Brad's Be Advised Leading with Value podcasts are available, just subscribe to this podcast with the subscribe button on this page. And you can share with friends and colleagues with the share button. Thank you for listening to Be Advised Leading with Value with Brad Swinehart. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Mike Love. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.